Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in the court of Judge Middleton as he takes on a sovereign citizen that appeared once in his court a few weeks ago who had fraudulent documents. And he is back for another appearance, a pre-trial hearing, to determine what he what his course of action is for the upcoming trial. But of course, the judge always has a few choice words for any sovereign citizen. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We got a lot of stuff percolating around, but one defendant isn't represented. So let's take him while Mr. George is working on us. Uh, no, we're good to go. Uh, Kirk Edwin Jensen. So Steve will never log in. Well, let's see here. Maybe they got mad because they logged in last time and we didn't accomplish anything. <laughs> yeah. so. No, but that case is going to be dismissed. Yeah, though, yeah, as part of a resolution upstairs. Come on up and have a seat, Mr. Jensen. Which will be on July 12th. So I should know it will be dismissed on July 12th or will we dismiss it now, Debbie? Uh, after the Please enter upstairs. All right. There are two cases, two retail frauds, two be defendant in Kalamazoo County Jail. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of plea okay. in circuit court. These are files 23167SM and 222506. Once the Halleck represents the defendant in those cases, these will be dismissed. After July 12th. Set APT for 84 as precaution. All right. Good afternoon, Thank sir. You. Are you Kirk Edwin Jensen? Yes, I have documents in here that I just filed with the clerk, and I need to submit them here. Is that this thing called non-statutory abatement? That's it. All right, I got it. I provided a copy to Ms. Davis. Um, it's entitled Kirk Edwin Jensen, Rain Citizen, Rain of Heavens, a set of heart place where that address. Non-statutory abatement. Ah, yes. Non-statutory abatement. Uh, something that only a sovereign citizen would really understand because, well, it only it's, it makes logical sense to them and not to anybody with logical reasoning. Um, file number 23660ST charges operating with no license. Charge 23661, charge with operating with no license in your possession. I don't think you can be convicted of both of those, as I said at our arraignment. And then the third count is a civil infraction. No proof of insurance could probably be charged as no insurance, but it was charged as a civil infraction. I have the proof of that here. Of that here. May I see it? All right, that's the person that owned the car. Correct. Yep. Well, now, at least the owner of the vehicle had some sense to uh, have insurance, but too bad they didn't have enough sense to uh, not let you drive, which is an issue that will come up later on in this video, and it's going to be freaking hilarious what this idiot of a soft hard wants to do with that information. All right. Uh let Debbie see that. All right. Uh, we had kind of a chase our tails around at the time of the arraignment. Um, you are, what do you wish to be, a rain citizen? The, I have a, um, 
I have a social compact and a body politic, which gives the authority for the credentials that I had when I had given them to Mr. Brooks at the time. Uh, no, the social contract does not say that you have the right to uh, forge documents. I mean, that is more of an a, a unwritten rule or agreement to follow the rules and the laws of the country in which you reside, which basically means once again, a sovereign citizen proves how poorly educated they are when it comes to anything, even philosophy. Um, and the, the officer that wrote the ticket. Right. Um, you had said that you were going to try to get those from him and uh, see them for yourself. Yeah, I don't know whether I got Ms. Davis got that or not. We did get additional information from the um, agency in Detroit regarding passports, and they confirmed that they are fraudulent. So if this doesn't get resolved today with the plea as charged to these misdemeanors, then we will be amending to have felony charges. All right, fair enough. Um, people call themselves different things. The common vernacular term has become sovereign citizen. And I do not claim that in any shape, way, way, shape, or form. Of course you don't. But you know what? If it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it must be a duck. And you definitely talk like a sovereign citizen, especially in the last encounter you had with uh, Judge Middleton. All right. I rebut that. I completely rebut that statement. All right. Well, I don't. I tried to think of a term for it. Well, well, the, you, just a minute. Okay. Let me get my thoughts together here. I we had a guy, Mr. Aiken, a couple of weeks ago, and we went round and round with him, and he wanted a jury trial, and he didn't show up, and then he was found in contempt, and he went to jail, and and I said, well, how about willfully misinformed defendant? That's too cumbersome or willfully ignorant defendant. And then I was laying in bed between then and now. And I thought, follow me here. Mimsy were the borough groves. It's like, what the heck does that mean? Um, it's from the poem Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. It was written in the 1800s. It's a nonsense poem that doesn't mean anything. And more importantly, there was a science fiction story written maybe during the war called Mimsy Where the Borough Grows. Uh, it's a very interesting story about some toys that were sent from the future back to here. It's pretty relevant right now with cell phones. And... Um, the third line is Mimsy, where the borough grows. And what is a borough grove? It, it doesn't make any sense. So my term for these people that come in with this kind of nonsensical jabberwocky is going to be borough groves. I mean, why not? None of these sovereign citizen arguments ever make any real sense anyway, because they're not based in laws. They're not based in facts. They're just based on things that they pulled out of their own ass, throw it against the wall and Hope it sticks, which is akin to using the muddying the water fallacy in their case. So this is Borough Grove. Uh, it doesn't mean anything, and neither do your pleadings. Uh, this non-statutory abatement and all this stuff about self-claimed contracts and Exhibit B and C has no lawful effect. Um, so the question I have here is, um, do you wish to have a trial on these matters or do you wish to enter a plea to this? Um, so did, does the body politic and social compact, uh, is that being disregarded? Correct. Okay. Uh, then I'll go with the trial. All right. Then I will. Do you want to have an attorney to assist you? No. Well, of course, Judge Middleton, what kind of sovereign citizen would this idiot be if he didn't go pro se and completely ruin his chances for an acquittal? But wait, my friends, there's going to be a lot more here in the few next few minutes. He's going to show how his lack of knowledge of the law is really going to help him out in the trial. 
and you will love it. All right. You sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The prosecutor is going to charge you with some sort of felony charge. What charge did you have in mind, Ms. Davis? I believe that Prosecutor Morgan looked it up and it was um, fraudulent documentation, basically manufacturing fraudulent passport and a fraudulent license. We talked about Conk Republic passports. Um, whatever you had in this false passport and some claim that somehow you had an international driver's license, you have to have a driver's license from somewhere to have an international driver's license. In right. this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I had that too. I had that too, yes. All right. Well, one last question. Um, the, the documents that were taken by Mr. Brooks um i want to make sure that those are entered in as evidence are you daft i mean come on man think about this really think about this i you i think you need an attorney because you just said that you want those fraudulent documents that the officer took away from you at the traffic stop entered as evidence dude that's what got you in hot water to begin with was those fraudulent documents. What you should do is try to get them inadmissible as evidence so that way they can't be used against you. That is exactly why you need a damn lawyer to begin with, you freaking idiot. When the time comes. Do you have those, Deborah? I do not have physical possession of them. I as all evidence, it's held by the sheriff's department and the evidence lockers. So certainly we would introduce those as exhibits. All right. Well, you're always polite enough, but you're. I stand this, for well, this. It's stand the problem with this do. is this is insidiously dangerous. People decide on their own that the rules don't apply to them. And even though they're polite and respectful, you're yanking my chain, and this is a waste of our court's time and Miss Davis's time. I intend to prove that All these right. things are correct. And just how are you going to do that? Do you have any uh, expert witnesses that could testify on your behalf lined up? Because the prosecution certainly has those experts, and they say they're fraudulent. So you better damn well have a uh, damn good expert on your behalf. But, of course, you're probably just going to sit, uh, sit on the stand and say, oh, they're perfectly fine. This is just normal. I mean, that's not exactly how it works, dude. There are ways to tell. And I'm sure you don't know how. All right. Maybe you do. But they aren't. This stuff is meaningless. And if everybody decided like you that they don't need a driver's license and they don't participate in our social contract and they wish to use our public roadways and our street lights and our court system, but hey, it doesn't apply to me, things would break down. The rule of law would cease to exist. So it's polite, but it's insidious and it's dangerous. Uh, What's next? I don't have the social contacts so I can punch somebody in the nose. I can kill somebody. I can sell drugs. The rules don't apply to me uh, because I'm a RAIN citizen. Well, it don't work that way, at least not here in Michigan or in St. Joe County. Same rules apply to you that apply to everybody else. And you're going to get charged with a felony document fraud case. So I'm going to set this for, do you want a bench trial or a jury trial? Jury. Yeah, the same thing. It's hypocritical. The rules don't apply to you, but you don't mind bringing in 30 of your citizens to come in and hear it. It's going to be stuff. just me. It's just going to be just me. Uh, I'm going to set for a jury trial. Your Honor, if we amend it, obviously. I understand. Valid, we'll I just want a target date. Sure. For August 16. If prosecutor amends to felony, we'll schedule a pre exam.
Mimsy where the boro grows. That's what this amounts to. It was brilliant on their slithy ties. Uh, it, it's a bunch of nonsense. And uh, so, Mr. Boro Grove, I will see you on a August 16th at 8.30. Ron, just to clarify a few things uh, in anticipation of that. Uh, as far as service, Mr. Jensen, will you accept service at the email that you have on this non-statutory abatement? Correct, yes. Okay, so just one of the clarification that uh, I'm going to send a witness list to him, make sure that he has the supplemental report from... Yeah, there the is Steers. one thing that it does have some merit in here. He asked for discovery, and he's entitled to that. So, yes, this your, dis, your request for discovery is honored, and the prosecution will provide all discovery to the defendant. Yes, so we'll be providing that to the email that's listed at, um, on this document that was filed today. And what email will I, will I use to respond? Yours would, the email that it comes from, which okay. is PRLS. Okay. Uh, St. Joseph County, am I that old? Uh, as far as witnesses, the people would intend to call Deputy Kevin Brooks, Detective Sergeant Brian Steers, Chris Catone, or Catone from the TSA, and James Herdman, Special Agent, Diplomatic Security Service from the Detroit office. Will all that be included with the email? Yes, I will do a written, a written witness list. So What's that, that officer's name? Uh, the last one, James Herdman, H-E-R-D-M-A-N. And then potentially this um, Cheryl Pulaski. The owner of the car? Yes. I don't believe there... There might have been another backup officer. Let me double check. I don't know if we'll need him, but even though you have these mistaken beliefs, what's your objection to having an attorney to help you with this? Uh, I I do not choose to have anyone, any bar or associates, representing me. All right. If it is not charged as a felony, in the meantime, you're to be here August 16th at 8.30. Okay. And uh, do you have any witnesses that you wish to call? Um, potentially the owner of the car. I'm not sure at this point, but that would be one potential minimum. Wait a second. You want to call in a witness on your behalf that's more that would be more than willing to screw themselves over just to help you out? Because according to Michigan law, they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have loaned you the car to begin with because that's a misdemeanor offense. Maybe you should rethink your own defense because it's more likely if you do call them up, they would probably take the Fifth Amendment because they would be incriminating themselves to help you out. And yeah, the Fifth Amendment will kind of prevents that from happening. Uh, other witnesses, would they be available? One precaution, the owner of the car might have a Fifth Amendment right not to testify. Mm -hmm. If they're allowing you to drive the car without an operator's license, that could be a misdemeanor in and of itself. So that's something to consider. But... Uh, We'll address it further. We'll see what Mr. Marvin and Ms. Davis elect to do with this. For further witnesses, would Zoom be available? No, they be here live and in person. Okay. Uh, all right. Any questions? All right. You're free to go. Thank you, Ron.
they choose to call themselves by different titles. Henceforth, I'm going to refer to this type of defendant as a Boro Grove. Makes me happy. Well, I can't wait to see the trial itself. And I can't wait to see this guy fall on his face when he doesn't know what the hell he's doing to begin with. It should be quite entertaining. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.